Any questions for him? Yes, sir. On the back. The back. How do you uh, verify this information? Say I say, you know, I've been using maze or something. Okay, uh, verification is, a, is, a, is an interesting challenge. Um, one of the basic elements is that not, um, well, 99% of us are not born thieves or liars or all of the above. Um, that's a, it's, a, it's a funny thing to say, but for the most part, most people have good intentions. You will get a case or two where somebody has a bad intention and they'll give you wrong information, but again, you will learn from that kind of thing. And similar to, say, a platform like eBay where people buy and sell goods and we have seller ratings, a platform like this could create a kind of reputation and ranking score so that you say, if I am dealing with this kind of person, the information they have is good, therefore you can rely on them, and through that kind of channel you'll be able to get uh, high quality information. But again, look at Wikipedia, it's something that should not work, but the amount of information over there is actually pretty quite good for the price that you pay, which is zero. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, just a quick thought about the whole idea of development, because I think that's a very tricky word. Um, when I say tricky, because you based your whole um, argument or premise upon the idea that development is this and therefore that. Now, I, I, I struggle with that a little bit because for some people, development is wearing a shirt and a tie. And this is where the problem lies, because we think that because somebody doesn't have internet, he's less developed. Is it because I have certain things or advantages that I have, which he doesn't have, so I consider it to be less. But maybe he's perfectly happy and healthy, probably healthier than I am. I mean, you don't know, we don't know all the, the variables that exist in this whole question. So I think it's a bit, it's a bit of a, a gray area. It is, it is a, a philosophical issue. I mean, like if I come and say, you, sir, I'm not developed, that will offend me, <laughs> right? But uh, if I then go to define the level of development in terms of, say, um, I have seven phones and you've got one, then by that definition you're not developed. But whether or not that's true or it makes you happy or so on and so on and all these other things is a different thing. So I think it's very hard to define what development is, but if we take it as a basic idea of what do you have access to and then work from there, I would say that if the country is at a level whereby there's roads everywhere, there's no potholes, there's good communication facilities, there's affordable, all that kind of stuff, we would say it is more developed than it was. But I think more infrastructure development rather than personal development, because infrastructure is quite easy. If a road has portholes, it's not developed. Right? If a road has tarmac, then it is developed, that kind of thing. But with people, that's entirely different. And at the same time, I would like to dispel this myth that um, you know, whenever you live in a capital city of any country, you have a tendency to think it's superior to like, you're the man. Right? Like what you're doing and what you have is the way that things should be. Whereas there's a whole bunch of other people who have quite a good life, uh, who are outside the cities, who are not developed, but are still doing things that you could never dream of. Again, peace of mind and all these other kind of uh, philosophical things come into that. Okay, so it's something to think about. Um, you know, the whole thing is development, but if you don't understand what that word means, then obviously you won't be able to move forward. But for my sake and for this um, uh, discussion, Development is about infrastructure. What do you have facilities to do? Okay, other question? When is the app going to be live? Can't wait. The app? Um, well, again, I'm a software developer, so this is not something that I'm just talking about. It's something that I very much love to build. But again, it brings me to a topic that is also very interesting. You know, everybody is very excited about mobile. Mobile this, mobile that. It's actually quite sad in the sense that there is a, a point that many people are missing about why we have there are billion SIM cards right now, and we still don't have some kind of magic Facebook effect on the mobile, the equivalent version of that. And one of the problems, I think, is the business models that are related to it. So, for example, suppose I was to take this application and approach Tigo and say, hey, let's work <laughs> on this thing, right? Uh, Tigo is fantastic because they're here, you know, they're very strategic. Now, um, if I was to approach Tigo to create this kind of thing, the current prevailing models um, in, with mobile operators is, first of all, a guy like me could never get that kind of thing. Why? Because they would need a vendor, they would ask you for a balance sheet. Yeah, God, what is that? You know, when, when, when you don't have a balance sheet as an individual, you won't be able to deliver. Second problem is the business model that is involved. Uh, the moment you go deal with a mobile operator, 40% of your revenue is gone because of revenue sharing. It could be 30%, it could be 10%, it could be 50%, it could be 90%. But basically, the mobile operator is saying, look at me, um, I go to TCRA, I want to open a mobile uh, company in Tanzania. I have to pay $600,000 just to get the license. Okay, so that hurts. And then I have to build a tower which will provide broadcast coverage to a particular area. 
they could cost as much as $80,000. These people spend a lot of money. And because they spend a lot of money, they need to have a way of recouping it. And they're very heavy-handed about the kind of contracts that you tend to have. Again, it's something that um, could be addressed, and I think a platform like this is a good one. But for an application like that to be developed, the kind of thinking has to change entirely. And I think uh, a fund such as uh, UCAP that allows these kind of things to proceed could actually help you know, make the operator feel a little bit uh, more comfortable so that they could say, Eric, I will give you 40% of this thing, and I'll be like, yes, now I have $15,000 plus $100 million on top of that. <laughs> so, uh, that's, a, that's a challenge that we need to address. I think the business models around it, uh, but as far as the infrastructure that is required and the capability for those applications to be built, it's already there. USSD is very well known, it works quite well. Um, SMS again is very well known, it works quite well. The has been around forever, it also works quite well. It's creating all of these things into a single mesh, a single platform that can deliver that kind of information that we need. Okay, more questions? $15,000. Yeah, well, any questions? Give me $1,000 and I'll contribute. <laughs> okay, so for the USSD, uh, yes. uh, <clears throat> at the moment uh, it is possible to have a USSD up and running without tying to mobile operator. So you could have a USSD, USSD uh, gateway server configured and it's triggered not by star blah blah blah, but it could be just like a flash or an SMS and then it brings back the menu to whoever dialed it. Uh, in that way you're not tied to buy a premium code with a leg better, and two, you don't have to have a connection, uh, an old, old time on connection with every operator. We have about what, seven now? So you could have just a saver tied to uh, three, maybe SIM card numbers, but then you also have to look at the traffic, how much you can handle per you know, second or minute. But then triggered by SMS or triggered by just calling and hanging up, it brings you back. Uh, this is the menu that you can you know, connect your gateway. So does he get the cuts? Uh, of course. Maybe 2%. <laughs> I'll think about that. Any more questions? As long as I keep 80. As long as, as, long as uh, Tigo wants 80% of the share, naturally. Yeah. Yes? I just have a problem. And I'm not going to defend telecoms. Okay. But I would like to steer or um, kind of like create awareness about something. Okay. That uh, the reason you're here is also as an inspirational person that the thought of a problem we have here in Africa, and then uh, luckily enough our fellows in the North World ran this competition, okay? So I want um, us general developers and business person people to think of the problems we have in Africa. And not only that, another issue people forget is intrinsic. Anybody works for intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So try to think of something that you face, a problem that you face, and you, and you, and you like to be solved. And go to the software developer and ask, can this or that be done? You know, when we're stuck in traffic every day, why can't we play mobile games while we're in traffic? You know, people need rides from office. But I'm not going to call the whole office and ask who needs a ride. Maybe we have an application where we just go in and say, hey, I'm going to work it. And then I'll give the lift from the office. You do it, you save things. So, you know, that's the kind of thinking that we should have. And as I said, the intrinsic motivation. Maybe there's something that motivates you. You want to share information, you want to do this, you want to do Okay, now, for my big best example actually is mobile microfinance. Now, the Western world have been using credit cards and mobile and, and, and uh, ATMs, okay? And because of the uh, information flow, then you can track where someone lives and you can give them credit and so forth. Here, we have adopted mobile microfinance instead of going with all the way to internet banking. Now, it's still, I, I can't recall that we have skipped internet banking and we have skipped um, We've skipped other things and gone into more that this is a development. But it should steer your mind that there's some things that we can invent. And the whole, a lot of the third world countries are from, um, is coping from this. So there are some things that we can develop. So we can only develop because we are living here in Africa and we face these challenges. Our fellows who are working on not think of these things. So you know, let's use these kind of platforms and so forth as a way to steer forward the state of the Russia. Have you considered that the level of education opens people 
Okay, yes, uh, the level of education is a thing to consider. But again, this is that thing I was talking about for those of us who live in the city. You automatically assume that somebody who is not in the city is stupid. This is not true. Um, if you're going direct to a farmer, then the level of education obviously is, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. But again, that might not be true. And it keeps on changing because as a lot of people who have money begin to invest outside the city. You know, Dar es Salaam is very crowded. And there's a whole bunch of people who have money here and they don't know what to do with it and you'll find that this kind of stuff goes outside. So, level of education, I think, uh, first of all, before we answer that question, you really need to know what it is instead of assuming that the people are just not right. That's number one. And then number two, once you've uh, achieved the level of education that is there, you'd be surprised how many uh, stupid, smart people are in this room as well. Um, you could create an application right now and all of us with our degrees and our diplomas and everything else will still put up our hands and ask questions about it because when it's new, it's it's different. It's still hard to use. So, uh, as far as education and level of education goes, it's a thing that you have to do research on. You have to go find out the type of people who are using it and you'd be surprised just how much smarter people are uh, than you think. When I was creating this uh, SMS social network before, um, the word Vidyunga, which means to join, um, was what you would send if you wanted to get instructions on how to join the network. But um, language being what it is, there was like three or four different ways of writing this particular word. And every single person is saying, well, it makes sense to my brain as a human being that I can write this word and it would still mean what you intended. Why is your application not working? Then I'm the one who's called stupid. You know, so, um, it, it, it's important to know the kind of people who you're dealing with, and if you have an application that is very specifically targeted, you do that kind of research. But again, things like USSD, um, you know, the, the, the fact that M-Pesa has spread so far and people pesa is, again, you know, trying to catch up and doing that kind of thing, it shows that uh, a menu-driven application is something that a lot of people could use. Plus, it creates an opportunity. If the level of education is as low as we think it is, then perhaps it's a business opportunity that somebody can hear or, you know, invest. What do I do? I, I create a company that teaches people how to use their mobile phones better. You'd be surprised just how many people would need, uh, you know, that kind of facility. So, yes, think about the level of literacy that is there, and don't assume that people are less intelligent than we are, and then create applications that are easy to use. In terms of language, you need to be flexible with words. In terms of access medium, you need to use things like USSD. If you're working on the web, and you need information to teach people, and so on and so on.